Welcome to day seven of our January challenge 2020 and our sixth day of working at a relatively fast pace through Lauren Scott's gorgeous arrangement of the seal lullaby. So I'll play you how what we're going to start with today and then we'll have a work through it. through from the beginning there. In that right hand we've got F, G, A, D, B, G. You could go three, two, one and then leap and put on a triad. Or to be a little bit more secure you could place four, three, two and then you've got the one there ready and you can move to the triad. Okay, then we've got four in a row from the B down to the F. And I probably would come off after that. Then we've got a GA. You can either do that with three, two, like I've got there. So I've got my one ready and I can reach for the D. Or you could go two, one and have a bit of a lift after it. Depends on the feel you want to create. So from that B going down. Okay. It's nice to connect that B to that D, whichever where you lead into it. Okay, if we look at the left hand underneath that, it starts with a bass D leaping to an F. You could place it, you could just allow it. So definitely do the bass D with a four, no matter what, because that way the rest of your hand is already much closer to where it needs to be next. Okay, then we can place on B, G reaching with three to the D, so you've got the slightly larger gap between your two and three there. It's not a triad, a little bit bigger um, in the sense of the way I use the word triad anyway. So then another D to F and another G B D. Okay, it's got a nice repetition in our left hand pattern again there. Um, if we try putting those two hands together, so we have the Four, three, two, one, I think personally, in the top hand. Left hand down on the D. We're mezzo piano, so we're not too loud. Um, towards the end of this line, we crescendo up and then we get our mezzo forte um, in the next little section. So here we go. I'll count us in after three. One, two, three. Long a gap there. I'm going to try that again. So, um, da, 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 dum, da. Mm, I know what I did. It was in the second bar. I played those two notes, I believe, as quavers, which meant my left hand came in sooner. So the bar had the right number of beats, but I was a little bit out of kilter. So, should we give it another go? Well done if you spotted it. Here we go. Counting you in again. This is at the beginning of bar 40. One, two, three. That was much better on my part anyway. Um, so um, one thing to watch, and I'm not doing it brilliantly there, is on this GA, it's the A that really matters, not the G. And I think as I'm playing it, and maybe it's the finger choices I'm doing, um, I'm bringing the G out too much rather than the A, so I'm kind of going da da da. We want to go. So I need to be very conscious of aiming for that A. Maybe put um, a circle around that section or a pair of specs. Um, it might be that the finger choice of doing two one there would allow me to bring that out better. Um, so although the three two lets me lead to the B on the one, it's maybe not working musically. So finger choices have lots of ramifications, so lots to think about. Let's give it one more go. Playing through from the beginning of bar 40. After three. Ready? One, two, three. I 
played that better there. And I did choose to do the 2-1 on that GA and that really helped me bring that out. Okay, let's move on. So the next part, we have a G quaver at the end of that bar leading into bar 44 with this C. So I'm gonna do that 2-1 in the right hand. G, C, then I have B, C, and I'm going down to E, D, E. So the finger choices I'm choosing there is two, one, three, four, one. Okay, three, four, three is really awkward. Our fingers don't like doing that kind of move with those fingers. Very comfy with ones and twos doing that kind of move. Three and fours coming back on are quite awkward. So B, C, E, D, E, I'm doing two, one, three, four, and notice how my one was on there. Ready. Okay, then we have E, G, but then we're going down to an A. So again, I'm gonna go down, and I'm gonna go down with my three and four, so I can place. So I've got my E, then before I play my G, I'm already reaching for that three, four. Okay, so if we just put that little bit together, this is the G at the end of 43, that quaver going up to the C, after a count of three, one and two and three, and two, and. Good, should we try that one more time? Okay, just that right hand after a count again. G to C. One, and two, and three. Brilliant, okay. Um, I will add the other bit in a moment. Let's add the left hand underneath that. So left hand is on a nice straightforward octave and a fifth. So aim for the top note with your thumb, which is the A. Allow your hand to open up the octave and your finger two, nine times out of 10 will fall into the right place. If we do this kind of move to find it, we're doing a lot of work, a lot of processing, just to open your hand up and aim with that thumb note. Okay, so we have A, E, A. And then our next little chord is either side of that thumb note that you've just played. So just one and two on there. Then we have F, E, A, A. So one and two on the F and E. Thumb moving to the A. The little quaver A is gonna be on its own with the thumb. And then I'm swapping to a finger two to get that strong last note, okay? So if we just play through that left hand from bar 44, so A, E, A, open up your octave, aiming from your thumb. One, two, three, and. Three, two, three. Super, okay. And then at the very end there, having gone one, two in the left hand, the right hand takes over a little run. It's like that A is the start of a run. The actual pattern of notes there is A, B, C, E, A. So the right hand is gonna do four fingers on, fourth on the B, third on the C, second on the E, thumb on the A. So if we do that together, I'm gonna to start with my thumb on that final quaver A at the end of bar 46. That'll be A, A, so I'll count us in. My right hand's already on the other notes, to save getting in each other's way, I'm making sure my left thumb is higher than my right hand there, and I'll count us in. One, and two, and three. Lovely, and we don't wanna to be too strong in that top hand, it's a follow on from that left hand note. So if we put all that together now, um, from the lead into bar 44, so right hand has got that G quaver going up to a C, Left hand is opening up to the A octave with the fifth in the middle, which is that E. We're mezzo forte here, so we're a bit louder than we were earlier. I'll count us in. One and two and three. Now that we've put hands together, 
Um, if I go straight in on bar 46, where my right hand has got a 3, 4 on the A, G, my left hand is on 1 and 2 with the F and E. And it's that decision that you want to make for yourself about whether having played the first beat of that bar, which is the A in the top hand, the finger 3, and the F, the thumb, in the left hand, if you want to place that left thumb on the A ready, which might deaden it too soon. If you do it very cleanly, it will work fine. However, you could also let it ring out. It's a bit clashy, so you might choose to say, actually, no, I'm going to very intentionally not worry about the fact that I've just played it and be ready on it. something to be conscious of and make your decision on for what works for you. Right, let's play it through then from bar 40 right the way through today's eight bars, okay? Um, I'll do it a couple of times so if you want to just do one hand this time and then join in with both the next time that's absolutely fine. Um, if you're going to do just one hand I'm always tempted to do it the left. But here we go. So starting at bar 40 Right hand has got F, G, A reaching up for D. Left hand has got finger four on that bass D and you're already stretching, ready to be able to get to that F up here. Here's our counting and we're mezzo piano, not too loud. One, and two, and three, and. I've done that again, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna do that again. Here we go doing very odd things in that second bar. Hopefully you're totally on it yourself. Here we go. One and two and three and. just going to get my trusty pencil, put a nice big circle around that crotchet rest at the beginning of that second bar to stop me doing that mistake again. Okay, let's do it one last time before we finish today. Hands are ready after I count in. One and two and three and. especially in that little end phrase. Beautiful bending in fingers, bending that thumb over. Lovely, well done.